wanted to do a quick video today because last night there was certain things running around my head and then I wake up in the morning and then I put social media on and it just happens to be like oh people are in agony and suicidal and stuff and you're like well I don't know what's going on with the um, state of world but the fact is the world's directly interfacing with you these days in the form of social media so if you're having things going around your head then you should present what you were going to talk about, right? If you see the sign that says you should do it then. Because basically what it was is mental health. People call it spectrum sometimes, like borderline. You can have borderlines, whatever. And when people talk about suicide, I can only imagine that, that they must be hearing extreme forces upon their being. Is it just hopelessness or is it overwhelming noise? Is it societal external influences on the being? Because someone said if you're depressed, make sure you're not surrounded by arseholes. I have some experience in suicide in the family. And from what I can tell, he's under immense pressure. No place of his own. Couldn't see his kids because external factors. Potential um, character assassination. Stuff going on. Stuff you have no control of. Stuff where, obviously... Like, there might have been footage of him that existed that he didn't give permission to give. There was, like, a lot of factors that people were saying were at play. So, to have all those external things and stresses, people feeling like you ain't got a friend in the world, would affect that. But it's a moment in time, a place in time, and nothing. Even that extremity, where you feel like you literally have no control over your own life. And you are just existing. It's like kind of like being in Guantanamo Bay vibes for like the mind, body and soul, right? That's as bad as it gets. Because if that's what it is. Anyway, when it comes to other mental health issues that might contribute to the factors of somebody actually committing suicide, like schizophrenia or hearing voices or other, other energetics that feel like you're out of control of that part of yourself, thus you cannot function in the world, end it just a scenario the power of now is a book that teaches you to observe your own mind every part of it every grisly part of it if there's a evil circus going on upstairs because this is a phenomenon i've talked quite openly about on facebook and i don't consider it a mental health issue i consider it a byproduct of an overactive imagination perhaps like when it was at its worth in the past it was like get mercury fillings out of my head because I think they're some kind of conductor for atmospheric pollution like can I hear stuff because it's never a positive voice or it's never a positive connotation it's always like we know what kind of girl we're dealing with and the, and the worst part of it is that those weird phenomenons seem more like women's intuition and strange events involving strange people has come to pass after those strange phenomenons so that's mental health in a broader spectrum it's like people can diagnose things and say that is mental health or it could just be some deeply insightful woman's intuition in the atmospherics like i said wanted mercury fillings out of my head when it got it it's worse like what the fuck is that but it's past phenomenons we're talking more making it more acceptable that people are dynamic creatures that they're not just things to institutionalize with oh that's that you need to take medication to do that it's like pff, not really that will pass that will pass even when you have extreme dynamicism operating on your head that seems to just be a prediction almost well that come to pass but to be under extreme external influence of pressure as well as this pressure is what i do believe that people are when they talk about suicide so anyway there's someone on acid, talking about acid math some guy talking about suicide and I said learn to implement those tools of the power of now and if you can get on a train and your society isn't that oppressive and sick get on a train put your headphones on get a book and when you get off at your direct destination try to have a clean slate and treat everyone like a celebrity new best friend even that might then cause you to have more knocks and more challenges
that then might make you more suicidal. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You've got to think positively. That's very increasingly difficult to becoming in today's society. And someone like Russell Brand talks openly about this, like disempowering people to the point that they don't really see. That is sad, that you can't see much point in living. See, I personally want to decentralise power as part of my artistry because I want to make social work franchisees so we move away from, like, so much this sort of energetic... And I don't know if it's born of new media. I don't know if it's born of new technology. There are lots of things that Russell Brown was also talking about. But it's this idea that there are powers out there and they're making life just difficult, beyond difficult for people just to get on and enjoy the planet that they live on. Like envy cues and farming, woofing, moving, shaking people, fruit picking, going places, getting baby turtle eggs off beaches, making those things more readily available to everybody should be just like everyday standard. You know, it's like, what's to be depressed about if you live in a beautiful world and you feel like you're liberated and empowered? Nothing. What's to be depressed about if you feel like you're in a world where you can't go anywhere, do anything without getting arrested at an airport, spending the night in a cell or whatever? Horrible. These dynamics, they're just social dynamics. And if you don't know anything about my particular path in life, I become, I'm a operations security supervisor in O2 Arena. I consider that such a job, a 14-man 14, 14 team in charge of. It's a microcosm within a macrocosm. This world isn't much different from shrinking it to that where you've got a team of people when it comes to the police i was having a conversation with someone i said they're making life shit like you can't win when it comes to road usage i had my van inadvertently sort of taken because because of a strange series of events but it was a diesel and it was like they're telling people that the world all this all this get rid of you know emissions emissions yeah, yeah, on your case all over london is the worst dynamically for the pressures on the mind body and soul fact if it's not this it's that it's like injustices left right and center just using you as some sort of vampire leech to suck off like for money and then they tell you you should be so concerned about the planet oh they're ocd about a carbon footprint or this and this and this People go out their way to get electronic scooters and think they're doing their bit and then they start fucking throwing tickets at them. I mean, after just coming out of a supposed pandemic, after the prediction of a decade of potential threats again and again weighing us down, do you think it's viable that there are people walking around in uniforms actually leeching money off people or even putting tickets on cars? Because throughout the whole of COVID in London, they were giving tickets even at the start. At the start of it, there were people giving out tickets in Elephant and Castle and other places and in Bermondsey. And I was just disgusted. It's like, people could be going through crises and leaving that car there and you're still getting on their case. That's London for you. It's a heartless, soulless, destructive, dynamically, hellion, Londinium product of older... Shit. A big turd is what it is. A big monolithic penis of an entity unknowingly obviously because it's just a wage and a wage and departmentalized and lacking empathy nothingness and as far as i'm con I, I, I'm concerned money should not take precedence over people in this time especially if not for the next 10 years because graham hancock's window of 2012 we are living in the biblical flood epoch if you will not necessarily the epochs whereupon there is great change upon the planet. There's obviously been great change upon the planet with the Mount Tech and all sorts of developments. But the point is, we have a window of 10 years. So really, strictly speaking, especially the next year, everything should be chilled the fuck out. Chilled the fuck out. Because Peru, other continents, recorded six cataclysms these are the times, 2012, well, they actually said 20 year window, and decade of threats, let them eat chaos. Artists, artists, I think, have a lot more say in this community than you'd give them credit for. And as much as Boris presentations on TV tell you one thing, 
Nobody saw him meeting with all the Extinction Rebellionists. Nobody saw him listening to the likes of Greta or whinging on and demographics and talking about how we must, must implement more democracy and we should all be voting and coming to the conclusions about our own planet over the next ten years. So when I hear those as a Londoner and nobody else sees them on TV, we're talking think tank culture, Hollywood to science. Science is the new god. So them people where the pandemic supposedly come from all think tanking together with anonymous type crew so really it's not a them and us politics wise it's just chaos and we're supposed to just suck it up and walk around like yeah and get penalized by the bods at wage level because no one's on the same page and that's the most part that's the part that makes me the sickest that no one's actually been honest at any point and then they say hate is the new um honesty is the new hate speech why to stop people getting fleeced by people giving tickets just so I can try and give them a fucking break for a year as a supervisor I would say that as a politician I would say that as a Boris as a anything as a head of police as a head of council as a head of anything I would say stop fucking penalise people over the next 10 years and then I'd be a happy bunny I'd put up with any lies you can tell me that kind of wandered off down yonder down away from certain things but I think that if you live in an energetic that you can sort of sense that is off key that you know instinctively like intuitively is off key then you start to sort of everything is off key including your mental well-being honesty is the best policy